mountains are in the way so you have to go down along and then up it's about 300 kilometer trip each way and uh, yeah it takes about four hours but one of these probably that one that looks like the juicy boat that's a boat that I'm about to get on and it's uh, hour and a half no hour and three quarter this one so they vary in length hour and a half to two hours usually so I've got one in the middle, hour and three quarters. That looks very much like my juicy cruise. I should pull into number five. And then get a boat round uh, Milford Sound. So much for rain then but luckily i did have some plan b's like some local stuff in and around town for today just in case it wasn't such as this hike up the nearby hill mountain whatever you want to call it big hill small mountain uh, then later on go over that way somewhere and there's a gondola that'll take you up to the top of another hill and a luge track so i'm gonna have a go on a luge uh what else uh, jump on the bike probably after that and go up to Arrow Town where the shot over jet is and probably watch that uh, see what it's all about but I'm probably gonna go off up and do Skipper's Canyon jet instead in a couple of days and uh, what else some like ski fields out the back somewhere that should have a good view of town and the airport and then I need to get over to the next town Cromwell because yesterday the headlight went on my motorbike and it took out all the fuses as well I reckon because the uh, yeah. looks like the control rods that hold the filament in place sort of somehow came together 
and caused the power surge and it's all melted inside the bulb so it's taken out all the fuses I reckon I haven't had a look yet but uh, I'll do that later today or tomorrow or something so yeah I need to fix the bike as well um, yeah, that's probably about it for today fairly busy day and um, very sunny considering that Google said it's going to rain today for at least like the last four or five days now there's a view, there's Queenstown, that's the um, gondolas and luge track over there, that's the hill station right about there Morning! I'm up on a nice little hill. I was hoping to get a look at the airport, but unfortunately this hill is in the way and I'm not quite sure if that jet's just landed or taking off. I think it's landing, it's slowing down. Uh, yeah, I was hoping to be able to see the big jets coming in sort of down the valley and then landing in the airport, but this hill is unfortunately in the way. But uh, I can see a fair chunk, I can see all that bit and uh, the small general aviation crowd is quite busy this morning. There's one of the big jets just getting ready to line up and it's going to take off in a few minutes. But anyway, on to today. A couple of bits of sightseeing, nothing particularly amazing. And the bike, because I had a look at it yesterday. I was going to film it. I just had a quick look yesterday and then got a bit carried away and basically done the entire bodge job. Uh, the bodge job was thus. I checked the fuse to see if it had blown, which it had, and then I started looking at the lights and this and that, and then I just got a bit carried away and done the whole job. So what I've done is if you pull this cap off, you get to the back of the headlight bulb, pull that out and uh, remove the offending bulb which as you can see has somehow gone into a complete new nuclear meltdown and taken the fuses out with it. Uh, whilst I was at it, I've noticed that uh, both the bulbs, the dipped and the main, look pretty much the same. So I've pulled out the bottom one there, which is a little bit more tricky to get to and requires a different uh, technique to get the bulb out, which the owner's manual doesn't tell you about. So that took me a few minutes to uh, work it out put the two bulbs side by side and then discovered that they are exactly the same so now I have the situation where I've got the full beam is in the dip beam one and there is currently nothing in the full beam uh, that's just an empty slot and now once that uh, offending light was removed remove the seat this is the fuse box here 
flip that there. Fuse number three, the 20 amp, that's the new one. And then this, uh, the 10 array comes with a few spares. So you've got spare 10, spare seven and a half. And there was a spare 20, but I've now used that. So it's an empty space that I've got to get refilled at some point. So yeah, luckily the uh, 10 array comes with a couple of spares and due to its simplicity, everything is completely interchangeable. So that's the bodge job at the minute. So I have no full beam. I do have a normal one and I have a working fuse now. So that when you turn the ignition on and start it up, I have a light. So at least from a distance, I look legal. Uh, yeah, so that's the quick bodge job. And I've emailed the Yamaha dealer in the next town, Cromwell, and I'm waiting for a response, although they look like a pretty serious, big main dealer for this part of the island. So I've no doubt that they either got the parts or they will have them very soon. I reckon you've just taken off recently. possible. Rental vehicles may not be insured beyond this point. No exit, no camping. And then lots of little dots. What's that? Is that air rifle hits or something? Yeah, it looks like it's been getting shot with air rifle pellets for some reason. <laughs> There's a couple of actual holes there that are bigger. Is that actual proper bullets. Uh, that's that's small and tiny and a little dent. And that's big and deep. What is this? America? Okay, four have gone through, all the rest are just dents. But anyway, this is Skipper's Canyon Road, the most dangerous road in all of New Zealand. Dangerous to the point that, as it says here, rental vehicles are probably not insured. And even most domestic vehicles are probably not insured as well. 
that I don't have a rental vehicle or a domestic vehicle. So I can do what I want pretty much. And it's a dirt road. It doesn't look any worse than the ones that I have been on, so let's see how far I can get. Let's see if I can get to the um, Skipper's Canyon jet at least, because that's where I'm headed tomorrow. Skipper's road is narrow and prone to slips. Caravans and trailers are not suitable on this road. In winter, snow can close the road. Some vehicles are not insured past this point. No turnaround for six kilometres. No exit, which means however far we get in, we've got to get out again. However, being a motorbike, I can turn around whenever I want. license of a current registration. Yeah, I've got all that. Not necessarily for this country, but I've got it. No shooting from public land or roadway. <laughs> and the shine's been, sign's been shot up quite a lot. Steep drops, rock falls, steep slopes, 15 to 20 kilometres. Give it a go and see how far we get. I need to find somewhere to pull over. I can see the bus coming. I think my engine's already hot because the fan's going. Let go. Four legs is a bit more stable than two. And then they're stopping anyway. Anyone's wondering why this road is here? It was carved out back in the 1920s by gold miners. And this track is how they used to get all their stuff in and out. And now it's largely just here as a tourist thing. That's if your vehicle's allowed to come down here, that is. in the gully a little bit there. Doesn't help 
but I've got no tread on my back tyre. Not particularly bad. No worse than any other gravel road in New Zealand. I mean, it's a bit on the narrow side in places. And you don't really want to get in the gully like I've done once. So I'll try and avoid doing that again. But I mean, it's not the most extreme of roads, is it? Tarmac, it would be a lot easier. But other than that, it's not really that difficult. He says, I'm a long way from the halfway point yet. I think what's happened here. Fir trees are not native to New Zealand, so they try and kill them off by spraying them. And I think that's what they've done here. So all of these pine trees are now dead. So you've got this dead forest effectively. Not much greenery, if any. They were bought over in the 1800s by the settlers. They tried to stabilise the land and create shade and that, but uh, they're sort of invasive and they're taking over the natural hill. The hill should look like that up there, just grassy and a few grass tussocks and all that. Pines grow very quickly and they take over the whole area. The quality of the road is definitely starting to degrade. There's some rafts going down the river. There's the Skipper's Canyon Jet. We've made it here. Made it to the jet at least anyway. And that's how you get down to it. So that's where I'll be going tomorrow, down there. So that's the way to the bridge there. It's private property and no public access. So I can't get down to the bridge. But we should be able to see the bridge at least. From around this side. There it is. continues on further still but this supposedly is private property now I can hear the engine of a boat going let's see if it appears over here but I made it as far as I wanted to I mean I could go further doesn't look any worse than it has been, so might as well. Up 
pues que no hay We've had a little chance to cool down. Let's see if we can make it to the end. I can't imagine it's particularly difficult. Once you get past that jet, there's almost no traffic anymore. That's where a lot of the gold mining took place by the looks of it. And it's talking about gold here as well. So this area here is where it could all be all, uh, all have been happening years ago. Deep drop off. Stopping 500 meters because of falling rocks. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there was a rock fall here. road is definitely getting more crude and basic as you get towards the end. View of Tunnel of Skippers Slewing Company's Gold Mining Tail Race from Londonderry Terrace. In November 1903, miners clearing a blockage were swept into the river and drowned. Vehicle bridge limits, axles, one and a half tons, gross three tons, speed 15 kilometers an hour. One vehicle on the bridge at any one time. It's an old wooden bridge with steel cables. Fully original. come this far, might as well go the rest of the way. Uh, camping is allowed apparently. No way am I coming along that road fully geared up on that thing. It's bad enough just on its own. But yeah, this is the old township 
I think it used to be a bit more than just one house. Someone keeps these lawns immaculate. Is there someone living in there? Got some old ploughing stuff. That toilet. Oh yeah, they got one of them things like Toilets, pay eight dollars, but we've got nothing else. Trees were sprayed in 2014. Eight dollars still. And there's a toilet and some water. There's the ruins of a house, only the oven and chimney remain. <laughs> and whatever that would have been. See the old wood piles where the old foundations were. Lovely view out the kitchen window. Hmm. Pickaxe head. Someone forgot to pick up their. Uh, pants and socks. And whatever this is, there's a key on the outside. Is this the the hut? Someone's been drinking beer, I know that much. So this is the camping area then, I imagine. Let's be honest, it's not a bad view. If you can hack the 20 kilometer drive down that dirt track. Yeah, these have all been sprayed, look, they're all dead. Railway. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. Once all these trees fall down from rot, that'll actually be quite a nice view because they're obscuring quite a lot of it at the minute. Oh uh, well, that's the road over there, so I imagine, yeah, there's the bridge. But yeah, this is the end of Skipper's Canyon Road. And what a lovely one it is too.
Thank you.